if you guys could just take me through the process of the creation of a song, you know, from kind of from your head um, to the, the checks in the mailbox, kind of in your own words. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's fairly varied. I mean, at the writing level, some songs I'll write myself, some songs, you know, Todd and Dean write music to, write some lyrics, I'll rewrite lyrics. and. Uh, Usually things get demoed up, home studios, um, and I mean everybody has a little studio now. If you have a laptop, you can record. You know, you got a little battery-powered thing over there that does eight channels. Uh, you know, it's, it's a nice era for those toys. Uh, and going in the studio then, in, in the case of the band, going in with a producer, going taking more time, uh, investing a little more in that, and then. The release, it, it's, a, it's a very different era. It used to be, you know, when the labels were cash rich, right? You know, when everybody was buying a record, um, you know, you'd go, they'd be able to invest in this startup cost of sending you on tour, building it, sending you to radio stations, sending you to record stores back when there were record stores. And, you know, it was, it was this kind of slow build and you could kind of tell if things were going to tip over to where it might be profitable or not. And it, the deals were set up so they got profitable for the company way before it did so for the band, but by that point the band would be making money on the road, right? And you're selling t-shirts and you're showing up in person. Um, I mean, these days, this model, it's, it's entirely different. You know, we're, luckily we have an audience because of those major label days, and so we're able to head out, we're able to start out making a living on the road and having that be our baseline. And the majority of the album sales are actually at at the shows, you know, there's very few physical orders. Uh, most of the sales are digital now, so there's no, you know, there's no material cost in getting them out there. The distribution, it's you know, it's simple. You spend 50 bucks and you service it to all the digital people. Right. Um, and I mean, a little radio for for a middle class band like us. The real hope at this point is placement, uh, which when we were on a label the first time, you know. It's like the idea of using your song in an ad was, you know, anathema to all the bands who wanted to be cool. And now, you know, I remember, uh, uh, what's his name, Jose Gonzalez, right, who's total cred, you know, Venezuelan slash Swedish, you know, acoustic guitar player. And he broke because of a Sony, a Sony Bravia commercial. And the idea that you could break an indie artist with a ton of cred through a Sony commercial was unthinkable <laughs> 20 years ago. And now uh, those kind of placements are, you know, short of having a odd viral video or having somebody put a ton of money into you in some other way. That's the best chance any band has. And it's completely random. So like every single success story, the way I see it, every success story now is an outlier unless it is ultra major label ultra pop straight ahead it's like some music supervisor somewhere liked a song placed it some other music supervisor heard that ad thought it'd be good in their ad and it grows from there and so it's a really unpredictable uh but once again if you can kind of have your own business kind of tight and well controlled uh there's you don't have to risk too much to have those opportunities. They're just like crossing your fingers and trying to be in, in traffic. And it used to be, uh, you know, the, there were these people when, when TV started, started kind of putting in cool new music and there were, you know, the shows like Scrubs or I forget what, what the high school-ish, what was the high school one? <laughs> oh, uh, the <laughs> what? The OC? What? The OC. The OC. Big, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that was and the OC was changing the face of music. Yeah. And I think it was Madonna is her name. The, the woman who was, who was placing that music, she became the superstar. She was helping all these indie artists get heard for the first time. She was, you know, she could be on the side of good, right? right. Avoid the major labels, help these indie artists. Really, the deals were still decent for the artists. It made some careers to get that exposure. Sure. Um, and it became a way a lot of shows worked and it, became, it got to the point where uh, all of a sudden they were getting more in than they could handle and the labels were competing for that because they weren't selling records anymore because radio was, and you know, it's like, yeah. uh, so that world is, is very busy right now. Right, 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 right. Um, but it, yeah, it's a weird one. It's like going out and playing is the main thing for a band. and. Uh, 
you know, you can hope for something viral or whatever, but we're very, very lucky, once again, in our case, to have some kind of a name where people show up. Because uh, there's, you know, somebody was saying like 50, like the amount of records that are released in a week is the amount of records that 10 years ago were released in a year. So, and it's high quality. It's kids who grew up with their iPod, and so instead of listening to the one genre of music they could afford, they've listened to everything. And bands are amazing right now. So not only do you have more product, you have more good product. And uh, it's, uh, it's very competitive. So it'd be hard. I mean, to start out in this without a pre-existing audience would be daunting, to say the least. For sure.